My name is Mike Larson. I'm here today to share with you guys my passion for photography. In a sense, what I'm doing is I'm sacrificing higher quantity of pictures, which is, means that I have a little bit more storage, for less Photoshop time. Don't get me wrong. Photoshop is awesome. I own it. I use Lightroom to batch things and select through. Those are essential. But I don't want to rely on making those things a permanent part of my workflow. Because what I understood when I was shooting surfing is that if I can shoot it and deliver it and have zero production, well, if I have to do anything later, I'm, I'm basically, in a sense, earning less because I'm spending more time to do the same project. So if I can shoot right the first time, I give myself the ability to be able to make more money because it doesn't take me as long to do a job, and so then I can do more jobs in an eight-hour period. Or, or I can do the job in the eight hour period and then be done with it. Or I can have someone else do all the production on it and I don't have to pay someone to do all this sharpening and color correction. And, and granted, I'm sure that there's some of us in here who are experts at Photoshop and to, with no disrespect to Photoshopping skills. If you have to rely on that and you can't rely on a camera, then that means that you, I mean, does that, does that say you're, you're an excellent photographer who has mastered their gear? Because if we want to separate ourselves from amateurs, if we invest in the good gear, if we want to have those clients that can pay us to do money, we have to actually produce work that doesn't look like our aunt and uncle took the picture. And let's face it, it's a business, it needs to be profitable. If it's a business, it needs to be efficient. If you want to have time to have fun, get the business side done and forget about it. But you have to have the systems, you have to have the knowledge, you have to have the experience, all those things come together. To start this off here, we're going to have the polarizer rotated on, and that's going to have the sky be dark and the extra reflections to be gone. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add in the sun bounce. The sun bounce fills in the shadows on the shadow side of them. And then we're going to bring in the sun swatter in, and the sun swatter coming in takes away all the harsh shadows and gives a really soft look to things. So now we got our final shot, and it looks great, guys. Educational and inspirational, we can't beat it. Then practice, practice, practice. I can't stress enough set up opportunities for you to practice, not just the day of your shooting. There was a point in time where I realized I just did average work that year as compared to what I could do because I never got out and shoot. And then I would do one shoot where I shot for like eight hours of shooting bridal portraits and just exploring and, and practicing. I grew more in that eight hours than I did in that whole year. This is how you become successful is by doing things like this, exercising, practicing. Take for example a brain surgeon. Those people do things with ultimate precision but they practice at it. And one of the reasons why I wasn't as successful with my wedding photography earlier is because I never did these, I never did these exercises. And so I was known for shooting a bride, but I only did it for 10 to 20 minutes. That's how much time I got at a wedding because there's not a lot of time to go shoot the bride. Sometimes more, maybe 30 minutes, but oftentimes 10 or 20 minutes at a day. And if I did 20 weddings a year, that means what I am most well known for as a photographer is something that I do less than 200 minutes a year. Does that make me excellent? If someone, someone says, well, how, long, how much time do you spend shooting brides a year? Just, just the bridal portrait. I'm like, well, 200 minutes. I'm pretty good, you know? No, I mean, come on, let's be honest with ourselves. And when you spend eight hours doing this, the first time I did this, I was freaking out because I'm like, wow, I've never spent eight hours photographing just brides and learning how to shoot and working with them. That blew my mind. That was like opening up this new door to creativity and igniting my passion for photography. Some of the favorite things that I got from this workshop was using a lot of reflectors. You know, you don't have to use flash all the time and the sun bounces are absolutely incredible. I get more, much more what I thought in the first place. So I think if I learn this, I'm very happy. But, you know, this is what I get here. So I'm very happy for it.
vergangenes Jahr habe ich an einem Seminar teilgenommen, welches der bekannte Fotograf Mike Larsen geführt hat. Das hat mich wirklich umgehauen. Mike hat mich im Laufe dieses Tages zum einen natürlich als guter Lehrmeister zum Thema, wie nutze ich Licht und wie steuere ich Licht über den Einsatz von Reflektoren begeistert. Aber wo er mich wirklich umgehauen hat, weil das ein Bereich ist, wo ich nun selbst die größten Erfahrungen habe, wie er das Thema Marketing seinen Zuhörern näher gebracht hat. Das Technische kann man zum Teil nachlesen. Aber das, was man selten auf eine Art und Weise wie Mike Larsen dieses kann, vermittelt bekommen, ist das Wissen, wie man seine Begeisterung für die Fotografie umwandeln kann in kaufmännischen Erfolg in Verbindung mit der Fotografie. Mike Larsen mit seinen 28 und ohne spezifische Ausbildung dafür ist ein Naturtalent, wenn es um die Vermarktung und das Vermitteln von Vermarktungs-Know-how geht. Ich kann jedem nur wärmstens empfehlen, sich Mikes Tipps und Tricks einmal anzuhören. Every photographer should do a course like this because it sets you up. It's covered every single aspect of business, technical. It's just been marvelous, excellent experience, and I think anyone should do it. Have a wow budget. It's important that we wow our clients and we impress them. One of the things that we do for some of our best clients is after the reception, we give them an iPod with their images on it that they take in their honeymoon. It's a surprise to them, and it's paying it forward, and it costs me something, but I'm giving, and I'm blown away. And what are they gonna say to every single person that they know? Oh my gosh, my photographer gave me an iPod with images I could take in the wedding. Even if you loan it to them, and they get to take it to them on the wedding, and it has pictures and music on it. It's not that hard. It takes me like 25 minutes to put music and pictures on an iPod from, from here. It doesn't take that long. But they're going to tell the entire world, everyone they know, that you were the best photographer ever and you gave them pictures to take on their honeymoon. And people are going to say, wow, I want someone to do that. What did it cost you? $200 for an iPod. And if you get loan them an iPod, doesn't, it, you can just keep doing it to all your clients. And that's a way that you can market and grow. And that, that's fun. That, that kind of stuff is important. For your workshop, my payment was 400 euros. And last week on Friday, I was booked for eight hours for 1,900 euros. Cool, congratulations. Yes. Your so. workshop has changed my life. Yeah. I see things and I hear things that I never seen and heard before in your workshop, my cousin.